Welcome to the very latest edition of the Premier View Tipperary GAA podcast. Don't forget to give us a follow if you haven't done so already on Twitter. We are at Premier View Pod. On Facebook, our page is the Premier View Podcast and on Instagram, where we are Premier View Podcast. We have up to the minute news on all things tip GAA across all our socials, plus the odd giveaway so don't miss out. If you're a Spotify listener, don't forget to hit follow and also hit the bell so that you never miss a podcast episode. We are now delighted to introduce our new sponsor, Orga Retro. Go retro with OrgaRetro.com, specialists in county retro style clothing. Get yourself organized for 2023 and avail of our 20% discount on all orders until January 31st. Hello and welcome to the Premier Review Podcast, episode number 93. Happy New Year to all our listeners from far and wide. Today, I'm the host, Kevin Ryan from St. Mary's. I'm joined by Stephen Cronin from Carrick Davins, Enda Tracy up north from Tumavara, and Colin Purcell from Clonmelogue. It's definitely a glass half full episode, for, I think, for the Premier Review as we go into 2023. Tipperary have so far played two games. And a lot of the impressions I get from talking to Hurland folk in Tipperary that they're walking with a bit of a spring in their step, even though it is in January. Folks, I'm going to talk about your what your hopes or impressions are of this new Tipperary is and taking both the Munster League defeat versus Waterford and the Clare game and the good Clare win, should I say, from the weekend together. So, Stephen, I'm going to go to you first, fellow South man. Um, your first impressions of this new Tipperary Liam Carl led team. Well, I suppose the first impressions are positive. We're we're seeing, you know, dog determination, work work rate, and fighting for the ball, especially up top. Which um, unfortunately I didn't get to see the match uh, um, Sunday, but I was able to listen to it on the radio. And you know, what left a big impression was how hard our forwards were working without the ball, which I think is always going to be a great sign. And look, it probably. Liam Kyle now is getting a bounce out of the lads. He's he comes in with great reputation on the rage with the with the lads, um, regardless of what happened in his last year with Walford. And um I think, you know, I think the whole of the county is uh the glass half full to use your phrase, you know, going in with you now look to Tipperary again. So if this starts bad come championship for Liam, he'll be under pressure. But you know, I think I always think that the hurlers are there in Tipperary. It's just it's just getting them getting them performing is a uh, is the is the big thing, and I think Liam will get that out of him this year. And uh, we, I suppose we started off twenty twenty two. I suppose the Anna's horrible as, as far as Tipperary concerned with that defeat to Kerry um, early on. I suppose which kind of set the tone for the for for the year ahead. Um, reflecting on you know where this team has come from and and your first impressions then of this of this Liam Cal team. You think would you be as hopeful as Stephen for that, or can you see any kind of like clouds in the horizon? My optimism is coming from a place of it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> um, we started against Kerry last year, really, it was kind of a sign of things to come. Had we eighteen or nineteen players togged? Yeah, it was yeah. like trying to round up a junior B panel to play in the challenge match. Some even, you know what I mean? Willie Connor's breaking his leg, um, just everything going wrong, and it just kind of led into a year. Really petered out very quickly, but you can see already in the first two matches the coach and on, on the players like the, the amount of lads running off the shoulder, winning primary possession, running with the ball. You know, we're not lumping it on the field when we get in the half back line, we're looking up, picking out the short passes, r- traveling with the ball rather than lumping it. Um, and you can just see the energy in the players like that, that forward line that started against Clare. They were all impressive in their own right in terms of getting on the ball and getting a few scores, but I thought the work rate was very strong. Seamus Kennedy wing forward, Alan Tynan, like there are two lads that do not stop running up and down the pitch, and that's what you need. The modern half forward, you have to have an engine on you. And I was very, very impressed with Seamus Kennedy. He's played a bit in the forwards for St. Mary's, hasn't he? Hasn't he, Kevin? He Sorry. has, yeah. No, this year he went, I suppose, mid season back back centre back to show yeah. that regard. But yeah, no, definitely I think he's done the majority it's, it's of It's not somewhere he's completely years. alien to like it's not yeah. it's not like not like throwing James Quigley up into the half forward line, do you know what I mean? It's he it's has some idea how to play there. Yeah. yeah, and he he just travels the ball so well. You, you know, he when when he's playing in the half back line, he tends to just 
give the easy pass and just move it on to Ronan or someone to deliver it. But you really forget how much pace he has and the power in his runs. Like he got the ball a few times in the half forward line there and there was no stopping him. It doesn't look like he's moving particularly quick, but he is moving like and he's hard to stop. And he's so clever with the ball. So, you know, there was a lot of positives with himself and Gerard O'Connor there in the half forward line. So, you know, it's, it is a positive thing, but again, it's only what the 11th of January. Yeah. Two games in. Like Colm as well, you I suppose would be I suppose one of the more realists in the podcast. Like, do you think we're all a bit mad now and we're taking we're making too much out of two challenge matches? You know, one victory and one actual defeat in that as well. Kevin, I was probably being accused of not having a glass half full last year. It was more quarter full, you know, because I was meeting people on the street who were constantly giving out to me because I sounded so negative about Tip last year. Like, we scored fourteen points against Kerry last year at the same at the same time. So. Straight away, if you compare like with like, it's an improvement. So I was just looking back on Sunday. We scored 110 in the first half and 112 in the second half. You know, we scored 14 points against a much weaker team, you know, last year in total. So straight away, to me, there's an improvement there. As, the, as Enda referenced there, I mean, you don't want to be flippant about this, but we were almost struggling to get a team together this time 12 months ago. Having basically, if you don't mind me saying, arsed around with the Miller Shield, you know, for six, four weeks or six weeks before Christmas or whatever it was, which to me was a total nonsense as well. So I think we are coming in from a stronger position. There was 3,000 people, I think, in McDonough Park last Sunday. That's, that's a good sign. That tells me that, you know, people will vote with their feet. One thing I was constantly saying, probably here last year as well, is that I thought that, that, that there was a huge disconnect between the Tipperary hurling public and the Tipperary hurling team last year. And that kind of saddened me as well. You know, I, I found going to matches last year was a trudge. It was, it was a drudge. It was negative. It wasn't an enjoyable experience. So straight away last Sunday, to me, the most important thing was to actually win a game. I think it was the first game we'd won since we beat Antrim last year in, 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 in the last game of the league. If you remember, we scored a, a pile of goals and people were saying, oh, Jesus, maybe we're coming now. Like, and we were, we weren't coming at all, like, you know, so I, I'd be positive, but I'd be realistic as well. It is, as you said, only the 11th of January. You know, games can be very up and down at this time of the year. I think the Waterford game last Wednesday night, it took us 13 minutes to score. We had a strong wind in the second half, got level with Waterford twice, a little bit of indiscipline cost us with, with, with Cahill Barrett and you could say, is that a recurrent feature of Cahill's game? Maybe it is, you know, like something that you can't knock out of a guy, but, you know, you'd like to think an experienced player like that wouldn't be getting sent off at, at this stage, you know. Um, and, and I thought against Waterford as well, Kevin, and, and I, I didn't see that game. I was only going on a few people I saw who were down there, that we were a little bit toothless in attack. And one thing I was just, just thinking about myself today before I came on the podcast was maybe the difference between this tip team and tip teams we would have grown up with is we don't really have a marquee forward at the moment. We don't really have anyone to grab the game by the scruff of a neck and win, and win a game for us, you know. So. Yeah, and I was just talking about that very thing today to a, another, I suppose, fellow who was quite positive about the prospects, more so going on that performance. And I suppose he picked up on Michael Breen full back. But like you are right about the, the marquee forward. Obviously, Mark Hughes is the man in possession. To be high hopes for Jake Morris as well, in particular. Sean Ryan showed up well by all accounts at the weekend. End has already mentioned Garrod O'Connor, and I suppose we, if you even call him Young Bo anymore as well, Connor Bo has kind of has been on the periphery for a while. So I think there is a bit of options there. Whether you actually class Joe Brown now as more of a midfielder or attacking option, so there are players. But I think that during the league, just see if any agree or disagree with this. A lot of those players, you know, they're they will have to start putting their hands up and really nailing down their name on the jersey like for the Championship 15 and for those, I suppose, those more so important league games the likes of against Waterford, Dublin and Kilkenny. You can probably experiment a bit more in the other two. I just expect Liam Carl to kind of have a look at as much, as much of his panel as he could. But I suppose, just do you actually see, and I'll throw this open to, to the panel as well, do you actually see as, as in the, that kind of scoring forward that Tipperary might have had an abundance of over the last decade that there is a worry there, as kind of column says, that we don't have a marquee. You know, Bubbles is gone probably now for the foreseeable, if not for good. Uh, Callanan is, you know, is probably mid 30s at this stage. Noel is captain, but John might, John McGrath might be kind of injured for the majority of the year. So, um, I'll jump in there with that one. I think I'd agree with you. The, the marquee man is not there, and like 
Jason Ford, I've I've lo- loads of time from. Jason Ford is brilliant, and he he can he can rack up the scores now big time. Is he is he the the Seamus Callan esque kind of player? I don't think so, but I think we're Cal might slightly move away from that centerpiece forward if you get me. Um, and Shamey Callan, uh, Shamey Kendi's positioning at the weekend might might uh tell tell a lot. You know, it could be just the way things worked out, but you could see him. You know the half forwards working all the way back. The half forwards are going to have to be monsters to win the ball, but come back help the the backs and get the ball forward as well. Like they they'll probably be the first two lads that have to come off the field. You'd be in come championship, and I think it'll there'll be a more a bigger spread of scores for us this year rather than the 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 go to man. If you, if you get me, I I'd, I'd say we'll end up going down that road where our half forward line is is. Running and the halfbacks run 100 mile an hour up and down the field off the shoulder. Whoever's off the shoulder, he's the man tapping it over the ball over the bar. Rather than when we go back to 2000 and what was the it was a 60 or 18 with Jamie Callan when he scored the 13 points. I don't think we're going to see that again. I think we're going to see a, a, a nice spread of scorers this year, and I don't think we'll, we'll need we're still going to need Jason Ford to score. He's freeze or whoever's on the freeze. We're still going to need forwards to come up with three or four points. But I'd say the days of a of a centerpiece forward scoring six and seven points, I'd say could be could be a long way into the future for us. And then uh, just to, to come to you on that, I suppose Alan Tynan has started both of these Monster League games, last challenge matches kind of now would you see him being a central part of Liam Cal's plans for the league at least? Well, judging by the two matches. I think he's going to be a huge player for Liam Cahill. I think Cahill loves the fact that he has, he really has the engine that he's going, he can go for 70 minutes. Now, even after 10 minutes, he might look like he's the sort of lad that you think he's wrecked after 10 minutes. He has the arms and the hips, but he has a serious engine on him. But more than that, he makes some serious runs in the game. You've seen in the Clare match the other day, he went in on goal. He made a perfect run off the shoulder of Sean Ryan. Now, he should have scored it. He was 10 yards out one-on-one. Goal, he made a good save, but then it didn't deter him. Five minutes later, he made a run down the centre and set up Sean Ryan for his goal. Just powerful running. And kind of, probably kind of gets it from the rugby, for, you know, hitting the line at a right angle and just being able to move past lads even when he's getting a tackle. Um, but he's a powerful runner. And you need, should we see with Limerick, that's, you know, 90% of their game plan is uh, Tom Morrissey and Groot Hegarty up and down the field all day long. And he chipped in with a few points as well. He's he's a lad that's able to score. Like it's don't don't be fooled. Like he's he's a good engine and he works hard. But he is a, he's a good hurler as well in his own right. Um. So I, I think Cal really likes him for that reason. And uh, you know he's had he's had terrible luck with injuries and whatnot over the last few years. Just coming into inter county campaigns, he's always seemed to pick up an eagle or there's been something wrong. So I'm glad that he's going to get a run now on the team and hopefully he stays injury free. Definitely, and I suppose his ceiling as a lad that's maybe missed a few key development years is mm. probably a bit higher than maybe your traditional fringe player. Like, you know, of, of that, as you said, because the more hurling he gets into him and coming off a very good campaign with Ross Gray, a very good cl- club campaign, that he might be able to offer a lot and he probably does fit in with um, Liam, Cass, Liam Cass' style of play. I suppose, as well, I suppose, completing maybe our discussion of the half-forward line, we've Jason Ford in there as well, but like Noel McGrath has been named as captain this year. Is he a lad that you just keep in cotton wool, I suppose, you know, certainly for January, but you just introduce him gradually in the league now, do you think? Because you know what Noel's all about and he'll come alive probably the closer you get the championship or do you, re- do you really kind of start um, starting them, start winning games and with with the league, with the kind of, I think it's leash up first and, and, and go from there? I think it's important probably to get off to a good start, Kevin, you know, um, whether that means we need Noel McGrath to get off to a good start to beat Leash or whoever it is first, I, I don't know. I mean, no, no, Noel has been named as captain, so that would, you know, nearly tell me that he's going like Cal considering considers him a starter. Um, and has alluded, I suppose, to the running game there a little bit. Uh, you know, talking to somebody earlier on the week about this as well, and we were just saying, you know, Cal is pretty much a, a kind of a counter-attacking coach. You know, he likes that running off the shoulder. You know, like lads breaking the line, breaking the tackle, and getting through. And you could see how you could very much see how a guy like Tynan, you know, would fit into that as well. 
the other thing I suppose for, for, which would encourage me from, from Carl's point of view is he knows these lads or a lot of these lads he's coached them at minor and he's coached them at 20 and he's coached them successfully so I think that has to be that has to be a, you know has to be a major bonus and when you think about it like there, what there's five counties that I can think of straight away off the top of my head that have new coaches going into the Liam McCarthy campaign this year you've our old friend Davey obviously down in Waterford you've uh, Pat Ryan in Cork you've uh O'Donoghue in Dublin, you've you've Ling, of course, down in Kilkenny replacing Cody, and you've Cal. So, you know, th- like th- that also sets the championship up and the league to be very competitive. You know, all of these guys are going to be trying to lay down a marker for their own counties. So maybe Tip have a slight advantage in that Cal, having worked with a lot of these players before, you know, he he knows their strengths, he knows their weaknesses. To answer your question on Noel McGrath, like I know it's a bit of a cliche, but like you're not going to learn anything about Noel McGrath in this in the shit and muck in Mallow or, you know, Nina on, on, on a planet or whatever. Yeah, doing. you know, you're, you're not like, you know, so I wouldn't, I, I, I personally wouldn't be too worried about playing Noel at the moment. But at the same time, you know, you, you don't want to be not playing guys for the entire league and expect them then to come into the championship and start. I, I wouldn't like to think that. One thing that we spoke about a lot on, on this podcast last year was there seems to be the lack of a settled team, Kevin. And, you know, I'd like to see... 10 or 11 or 12 spots, you know, being pretty close to championship come the end of the league. I never felt that, I go on to keep going on about last year, it's ridiculous at this stage, but I never felt last year that we knew what our best team was. It was, it, you know, it was, you know, we tried to pick teams many evenings on this podcast and, you know, none of us could agree on anything. Like, you know, and, and so I, a long-winded answer, yes, I, I don't think Noel Cat or Noel McGrath should be playing at the moment, but certainly he should be introduced at some stage during the league and I would like to see a good, a good competitive league campaign from Tip. I think we should be every trophy you enter, every competition you enter, you should be trying to win, you know, and get a settled team at the end of it. That would be my yeah. hopes for the league. I'd agree there, and I suppose we don't know whether we'll be having another game in the Munster League game. Um, Clare versus Waterford is on. I think it's Friday night, and and then depending on what happens in that game, will you know whether Tip get into the final or whatever you want to call it uh, of the Munster League. But I suppose looking at back at that competition, we seem to have a straight um, shootout in goalkeepers between Barry Hogan, who's been kind of, you know, would have more inter-county experience, and Ree Shelley from Mike Harkey, who'd be a newcomer um, to the scene, although he's played he's played underage. Um, thoughts there on how you see that going, or is it a bit too early? Well, the two games so far, the first game against Waterford, Shelley was, he was impressive. Um, his puck outs are bang on. Saved a penalty, scored. Um, he scored a penalty the, the week before in the U for UL well, yeah. in the in the Fitzgibbon or the league final. There, um, just looks very composed. Looks like a confident young lad. Um, like there's no nervousness in his play at all. But he he really pings the puck outs, and he is a shot stopper, which I never really gave him credit for. Now, I any time I'd seen him, he was never really tested. To be fair, but you know he saved he saved a lovely penalty from Stephen Bennett and um, played well. Then you're looking at Barry Hogan the last day. It's obviously a competition for him. He really had to play well. And in fairness, he had a right game. He scored scored a boom and a uh, hundred yard free in the second half and made a ridiculously good penalty save from Peter Duggan. We know how hard Peter Duggan's able to slap a ball going into the top corner and he got the hurl up to it. It was a brilliant save. Um, and he saved a really, a really important block from Aaron Shanahan in the second half as well when, when there was only three or four points in it. So he really responded to the challenge. I think it's going to be an interesting shootout between the two of them. He never really got the, the impression that there was, you know, Brian Hogan and Barry Hogan. You know, had no real confidence in one or the other. It doesn't really make a difference. It's much of a muchness. But I think Shelley coming in is after lighting the fire under Barry. I think he knows that there's a young lad coming in here, and he's 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 very he's very young and he's very very cocky looking the way he's hurling, but he's got real ability as well. And if he wants to. Wants to be there come championship, he's going to have to put his best foot forward. Yeah, and definitely, you know, if we're if we're going out of the era of maybe a marquee forward, I think it is an era where we do need to be going in with a settled number one. Yeah. You know, most other counties would definitely have one, and um, you know, they're they're so important to restarts and all that. And even you know, mentioned that Stephen O'Keefe might be coming back into Waterford there, but it's definitely not an area over the last few years where you know confidence comes out from the back where Tip have been at their strongest. And just to say with you because it's very. I suppose Seamus Kennedy's position was a talking point or one of the key yeah. talking points from the last game. But the other one, <clears throat> undoubtedly, was Michael Breen at full back. Um, you yeah. know, Breen, 
he's you know you look at a big strap and kind of tempted for an inter county player or even the Limerick inter county model, but maybe hasn't found a home with this Tipperary team. Yet. Do you think that under Liam Cal, he could make full back his own where he's done a lot of kind of underage hurling in the past? I'm sure, I'm sure Liam is really hoping that he does. Um, I think he's going to give him a concerted number of games there to see if he can do it. Like the first two games, in fairness, he's been solid enough. He hasn't done anything too wrong. Um, there's a couple of occasions now against Clare um, where he's on the ball and he wasn't thinking like a fullback. You know, he, there was a point in the second half there where he won a ball out in front of his man and got out as far as the half back line, got the ball up. Usually a fullback is just going to dish it out and head back to his position. He went on a big run down the field into the half forward line and lost the ball. Ball was turned over and hit down the field and he was nowhere to be seen. So, um, look, in terms of, look, most most teams now play two two man full forward lines. Um, and in the last few years, we've kind of been at Barrett and a, another there that didn't really have much pace. In terms of having Breen there, the benefit of him would be recovery pace there. Like if a ball goes in behind, you know, Breen's going to eat up the ground and he's he's one of the fastest inter-county hurdles around in fairness to him. Um, look, we, we need more. We need we need a type of a game where maybe there's like a. I was going to say Aaron Glenn there, but he probably won't be hurling much. <laughs> the next bit. Oh, but uh, you know, a Daisy Hutchinson or um, or TJ Reeves, somebody to really test him and see how he gets on. And um, the first two games, he's been he's been solid enough, and he warrants warrants another few games there to see how he goes. But we need a real marquee forward in on top of him for a game. Hopefully, a few games during the league, and and we can see where he is from there. Yeah, and I think I, I suppose the way you do find out about these kind of moves, whether they work or not, is in the white heat of hopefully, like you know, a championship, and hopefully, it will be a good move. I suppose moving on, you know, from that, obviously, Rona Mara is about there. But one of the other talking points from the weekend was the performance of Brian O'Mara, who was, I suppose, you know, in, in 2021, a, a bright spot till he got injured, or was it even 2020 going back a year? But you know, has spent some time a bit away from the panel, but you know, is definitely now back. With with a with a bang, um, Stephen, just to kind of come to you on that, um, yeah, you know, the, you're, you're, or sorry, no, Colin, to come to you on that and and your thoughts about the halfbacks, um, on you know what kind of what format will tip will tip take on that for the league campaign? Do you think? Well, I suppose first of all, just to re- just to continue your point about O'Mara, Kevin, I probably should have mentioned that earlier on. That was a big plus for me as well on Sunday. I, I think he he'd be my early call for number six in the championship he looks good in possession he's good defensively he reads the game well he's got a good delivery into the forward line um again center back is a position that we've probably struggled with in the last couple of years you know we've we've moved lads in and out of there um i I think he's very much a positive against waterford last week if i'm not mistaken dan mccormick started on one wing and i think it was young young neville from from the the lad hurling down in clare started on the other wing i think from what I heard, Dan McCormick and, and Neville both did fine on the night. I mean, that, the placing a Dan there is an interesting one. You know, he's he'd be strong and competitive under under the ball. He'd be able to deliver a ball and would well able to win a free, as we know as well. Um, on Sunday against Clare, as we know, Mara was centre back. Enda Heffernan, I think, was one wing, and Brian McGrath was on the other wing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, but I thought Brian McGrath played well. He's you know he's a guy again, who's been sort of moved around a lot in the team in the last few years. Um, you know, he's good to win a ball, rarely gives it away. So, you know, you, you throw Ronan Marr into the into the, into that equation as well. And not to forget as well, Nilo Mara, who was probably, you know, would it be safe to say he was a standout club club hurler in Tipperary last year? He wouldn't be far off it, like, you know, in, 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 in his club campaign. I think he's, you know, I know he's a guy who's played wing forward for a lot of his time in Tipperary, but He's another guy you could look at f- for that half back line. So, you know, plenty of options there, Kevin. I think um, it would be nice to get a settled six. Definitely would be nice to get a settled six. And plenty of the lads there I've named then could fill in around. You know, you'd imagine Ronan Maher is probably going to start as well. So there's one position definitely up up for grabs in, in the half back yeah. line. And, then, and some of those options that you named as well could fill in at midfield. I would be a little bit concerned about our midfield options. I think I look at this really as being the engine room of a modern inter-county side. Um, I think it was Connor Sakem and Ger Brown started on Sunday. Paddy Cadell 
started against Waterford. Mixed reviews, I suppose, all. I'd have high hopes for Connor. Stephen, to kind of go to you and, and your thoughts, I know that you've definitely seen a lot of Joe Brown, Hurl for Club, Cashel last year and that. Would you have any thoughts on where Tip might be going? Even Seamus Kennedy and, and McCormick might be options here as well, or do you think that they should be backs and forwards? Yeah, well, I think, um, I'd say Cal is going to create loads of options. I'd say, I think that you're going to have to be able to play in the multiple positions. Um, for for uh for Tip and in, in Cal's team and like just just to go back to Dan Dan position in the half back, uh Shame's position a half forward kind of ties back into what he he'll be asking it seems the half hours half backs to get forward half half forwards to get back you know, but the midfield is going to be it's going to be a tricky area like you want your midfields you want them picking up the ball off the backs and getting it to the forwards but you also want some want them supporting the forwards, and. A midfield could be doing all the small jobs that will go unnoticed but will be so important. Like if a midfielder's not scoring two or three points, there's people going to think, geez, he was poor, you know. But he could have been there with, let's say, for instance, Brian Amara taking the ball off the centre forward. You know, it's it's a horrible place to play because it could easily buy a game could easily bypass four midfielders. You know, one or two of them gets a little a nice touch of ball over the bar and they look like a superstar. But for like for us, I I wouldn't have any issues with 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 his poor year, and um, but it's fine. And will he play him there? I don't think he will have the power for the half hour line. Although he'll have the athleticism, you know, midfield there with possibly Jer. If he, I think Jer needs to bulk up a little bit. I think he's um extremely quick can take a score as. Proved against Limerick, but you'd be thinking the type of game that Carl wants is is running, it's breaking tackles off the shoulder. If Jarrah is going to um, cement his place in midfield, he's going to need to get a lot stronger than he was the last couple of years. And um, no, I, I I don't know. Do we have? I, I, it's could midfield be the issue this year? Like you know, we seem to be well covered in the backs, the forwards. Yeah, Stephen. Doing, like I know you said, like midfield, they could the games could bypass you. Yeah. But like if you look at Limerick, probably two marquee field midfielders in there, Will O'Donoghue and and Darrow O'Donovan. You know, I'm like, yeah, I, like I'd agree with you that midfield could could be a bit of an issue. Now I don't want to like highlight something that you know they haven't played, they haven't struck a slater in anger in the league yet. Like you know to be kind of pinpointed as a, as a weakness, but um, just kind of get your further thoughts on that. Yeah, like just to go back to the Limerick lads, like I. I, I, without being disrespectful, but I see him as enforcers for Limerick, as in they're going to break up all the play. They're going to, they're going to do the dirty work with the lads in the back, and it allow the boys up top that freedom. Do we have lads with the physical presence to go and do that in around the middle of the field? I don't know. Like Will O'Donnell, who don't have to score for Limerick, and he'll it'll never be held against him because of the work he does on the other side of the ball. I, I, I don't know if we have a lad in his mould that's that, that's going to power around the field, uh, breaking la- breaking up tackles, moving on the ball to the lads that will do the damage. And that's probably, look, again, it's very, very early in the year. Liam Cal and his crew might have someone here, Mark, for that. And maybe he's playing full back. Yeah. I, I'm happy with bringing full back. I said it here last year. I think, I think, uh, full back could be a good position for him where it's, it's literally stop the man, move the ball onto the lads uh, outside you. And, you know, a back can kind of get lost in the forwards at time because they have to go, they have to go and find, find the ball. If you get, if if you understand what I'm trying to say, whereas a, a natural forward can do these things, whereas a back sometimes gets lost in the forwards, and I think that's what's going against. Uh, Michael Breen up the forwards at, at times because he's a phenomenal athlete you know it should, and it's it's figuring out where best to play him because I I, I think he's a, he can be a big asset for Tipperary and I think that could be at full back I think the ship has sailed for him out the field I think yeah Cattle's come in with the idea look if you're if you're not not going to cut at full back you know he's had a good few years now where he's been up the field and he hasn't hasn't produced it like he's When's the last time you could say he had a good year when we won the All Ireland? Was he even particularly great that year? Was he one of our better yeah. players? He was grand, but um, like midfield, I think is a big issue. Uh, now I thought 
since Connor Stafflum's come in, I've been fairly impressed with him. Last year when he came in, you know, he had a bad year, like, but he, he really stuck out when he got his chance. And uh, yeah. first two games he's played this year, started against Clare the other day. He's, he's a chap that will put his head in the line, but he will run into you as hard as he's able and he does not stop moving around the pitch. So he could be a lad. You could, if you could get him bedded in there, you could maybe compliment him with a runner, a kind of a midfielder that goes forward more so and Connor will be able to sit back. Paddy Cadell started two matches so far. He's a chap I'm really worried about uh, waste of potential because when he was coming up underage, we thought he was going to be the next big thing. But he's had a couple of years now at senior level and he's really just not doing it. He's getting no consistency. He, it's not even a consistent run of games. You can't get a consistent 70 minutes together, league or championship, which is a worry. Um, which uh, midfield is, is a bit of a concern for me. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. And I'd agree with you, you on, on Paddy Cassell, whether it's confidence or just having problems kind of adjusting to, I suppose, the senior into county game from, you know, what was a very serious pedigree in, in the in the, in the underage game. I suppose just before we leave Tipperary for now, just that we talked about the defence, we talked about the forwards earlier on. But one that hasn't been mentioned, I think done, done okay or done very okay in the last day and would be Shawnee Ryan, who looks another kind of busy, busy corner forward, got a, got a nice goal. Um, in an era where we might be looking for one or two kind of finishers or scores, do you think he could be making his mark or certainly worth a try in the league as well? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Kevin. Like, he, I think he did he score one one on on Sunday. Um, you know, he looked very sharp. I think, as we said, to, as we said earlier on, and, and 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 Stephen referenced it, like we're probably gone away from the era of of you know a go to forward. We're going to have several forwards now looking to chip in, and. Looking at last Sunday, it's a fairly obvious thing to say, I suppose. But the game plan needs to, seems to be to, you know, run off the shoulder, move the ball as quick as you can, and get it to the clinical guys in the full forward line, and and you know, get them on the ball and score. And 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 I got the impression from from looking at Sean Ryan last Sunday that he'd be one of those guys. I, I was trying to figure, I was trying to remember him from his underage days, um, lads. And I, I'm struggling. Was he on John Devan's under twenty team? Yeah, in yeah, 20 or 21. Would that be right, Ender? Would I be right? Yeah, that? he would have been coming on as a sub, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which, he been, yeah. It, yeah, he wasn't a starter, was he? No, no. Yeah, so he, that's... He, he would have initially played, he played Hearty Cup with our ladies and he would have played in the backs when he was underage, when he was really young. Um, okay. I think he only made the move up to forwards there when he hit minor. Um, but he's, <laughs> he looks like a natural forward now for a lad that didn't play there the whole way up like he's... He does. Uh, absolutely, I thought he looked clinical. The other guy, of course, is our, our neighbour here in the south, um, Stephen and 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 Kevin, uh, Mark Kehoe. Like you'd be hoping, Mark now has been like, didn't Mark come on in the twenty nineteen final? Nineteen, yeah, has so, uh, you know, with your so like you know he's four years in and around it now. Mm. Um, you know he's probably you know top of the top of the ground, dry day hurler. He probably suits him better. I, I you know I wouldn't be judging him too much on last Sunday. I thought. Kind of seems to struggle with his back to the goal. Probably a better forward running onto the ball would be would be my impression of Mark. And just probably needs to be a little bit more clinical as well. It seems to miss. That's the word. That's yeah, the word. it seems to That's me the seems to miss a few chances, Kevin. Like I don't want to be over, you know not to be overcritical on, on the lad now, but he he does seem to miss miss chances. He he swiped at a ball there last Sunday, you know, and I just thought Jesus, just steady up and you'll you'll get the score, like you know. So yeah, and I think it was the clear game last year as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We need we need one of one of Mark or Jake Morris really to start taking up a lot of the scoring mantle. Yeah. We're talking about not getting having enough lads to score. Look, Jason Ford looked like a lot of lads would be talking about his lack of pace and whatnot, but he's a natural scorer. He has yeah. to be playing, and you need Jake or Mark to be chipping in with three, four, five points a goal, one, two, one, yeah. three. Yeah, and it's with Jake match. like. It's consistency, isn't it? Like he's no yeah. doubt he's capable of, of great moments and stuff like that. But another lad has been around a while, you know, and does you know yeah. was key to a an all Ireland winning team. So yeah, def, definitely I'd agree. Uh, lads, I think that's been a great half hour as at least therapy. Um, I for one feel great about the prospects of Tipperary. Well, we're, we're all just delusional now, and the glass isn't half full. It's three quarters. It's overflowing. A cup <laughs> overflows with talent after two challenge matches and a bit of decent training. But um, just looking at the other counties, um, I think it was Colin mentioned that, you know, there there are a lot of different new managers there. So, you know, there's a lot of kind of uncertainty out there with this new split season. 
is, you know, like, does the league, it's very important at the start, but does it just taper off in importance, maybe as you win or lose a couple of games and teams decide that a bit of decent training is, is better. So, like, does that look, the elephant in the room here is that Limerick are going for four in a row this year. You know, whether they count the Mickey Mouse COVID all Ireland's another thing, but, you know, they'll, they'll <laughs> tell you they're going for four in a row anyway. So, are, you know, look, they've been on their team holiday. They're all refreshed. I think they might have left a couple of lads over there as well, but, like, you know, a team like that, it does pick up a bit of baggage off the field as well. And do you think that might actually, that off the field stuff might start to affect them or is it just, am I, am I, you know, like just clinging at, clinging at absolutely anything there to to maybe think that the, the chase impact might be catching up a bit? I, I just don't get the impression, I don't, maybe I'm delusional here now, but I don't get the impression that they're that far ahead. Like, would you, when you compare them to the Kilkenny team that were going for five in a row, do they have as much as an, of an air of dominance and invincibility that that team had? Because for me, they don't. Yeah, I, I, I'd you... agree. I, I'd agree. I think what Limerick will would lack compared to, uh, we're going to use Kilkenny as the, as the artistic here. Kilkenny could score goals anytime they want it. I don't think Limerick have that same. They're, they're, they're so well-structured it's tap the ball over the bar, tap it over the tap it over the bar. But when the when the need for a goal is there, I don't think they're natural predators in 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 the same way that Kilkenny were all those years ago. Now look, we can say Kilkenny has a handy old handy Leinster uh, Leinster championships to to walk through before they get ready for an All Ireland series. That can be said about that Kilkenny team at the time, you know, and maybe the one does. When Tip came along, Tip really put, pushed them to the pin of their collar for, for a good few years. You know, it became the Tip and Kenny show for a, for a long time. I don't think Limerick have the same sparring partner. And I think, Certainly not. unfortunately for we... us, maybe unfortunately that's the... for us, we hit a real low the last couple of years. Yeah, I think though, Stephen, we're probably, we're probably in, like, maybe we're showing our age a little bit, like, when we talk about the Kilkenny five in a row team, and, and obviously, you know, it's, it's the arts that Kevin's right to, to reference it, but like the game of 2010 versus the game of 2022 or 20, 2023 are two completely different games, in my opinion, yeah. and, and not for the better. Like when I look at Limerick, what I think of is over carrying. I think of throwing the ball, getting away with not getting red cards when they should. You know, so no tackle is what I yeah know, yeah. It, it just seems to me to be a different game, um, lads. It's a game that I, I I have to be honest with you. I I won't say I've fallen out of love with it or anything dramatic, like, but I, I certainly don't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed hurling. You know, ten years ago, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, yeah. and 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 I I almost hold Limerick almost wholly responsible for that. You know that they have changed. <laughs> they have changed the way the game has been played, and I don't think it's to the better. But I I don't want to sound churlish about this either because. Look, they've won four All Irelands. Whatever way we look at it, they have won four. You know, we find it hard to. We've always found it hard to win back to back. Like so, you know, and it, it kills me to say that because you know. But to be fair, they 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 are the best that's out there. They're justifiably favourites for this year. They will be hard bet. You'd imagine that they'll get out of Munster. You know, pretty pretty okay. You know, and then they have the experience and the know how going down the straight then against everybody. Obviously, you know, Stephen has said like they're. They're after being pulled back a little bit. I mean, Kilkenny could have beaten them last year. I think it's fair to say, you know, a, a little bit more. Kilkenny could have beaten them, you know. The, again, in the final, is you know, it was a very, very good final. You know, for what it was, it wouldn't be my. As I said, the, the game of hurling has changed a little bit, but it was it was good in that it was close. So I think yeah, they're back a little bit closer to the pack, but mm. they'd still be my favourites. Yeah, I just think, you know, Tip needed a, a sighter in two thousand nine after you know kind of coming. In 2008, right? Maybe that's the last comparison mm. and contrast we'll do with that. Well, like you know, Waterford probably could have been their closest challengers and self self destructed last year, you know, before they even got to a knockout game. So, like I suppose my big fear of, of Limerick is in that, yeah, I'd agree with Steve. They're playing at the peak of their kind of way of playing of their model, which is mm. kind of root to sufficiency. But I don't see any team developing. Like Tip are at the start, hopefully, of a journey that'll let end in an All Ireland. That's the height of optimism there, you know, the kind of new team. Definitely, you know, we, we knew Liam Sheedy great after squeezing out uh, an All-Ireland in 2019 and all that. But this is an, a, a new team. We're on the start of a journey after probably a, a couple of false starts. Like Waterford are back to the start again under a new manager. 
mm-hmm. Galway, the Henry experiment, like, you know, they were as they were, you know, blue hot and cold last year. I'd have big doubts over the quality in Kilkenny. I think Cody just squeezed every last drop out of them to get them as close to Limerick yeah. in that order in the final. I think that was just Cody squeezing everything out of a team, you know, and I, I don't think that tactics or whatever like that would have got them there. Clear, I think, are limited, you know, put that on the dressing room wall. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going, going to see Limerick. Look, if they're playing well in the league, they say, you know, they, they came back earlier for the league and all that and everything's fine and dandy. If they lose a few games early on, they'll, they'll park it like and they'll, 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 they'll circle the wagons and they'll, they'll come out a different team come championship. So, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, is, it is going that direction, though. Clare should, drew with them in the, in the round robin. Should have beaten them. Really put them to the pillar for Collar in the Monster final. Could have won that. Galway, True with the way I I felt in the last in the semi final should have bet them miss some sitters to put themselves in front. Um, I think I think right. a big thing is getting the conditioning right to stay with Limerick. We seen last year even when we look we can all agree it was a bad year and we weren't really prepared, but we had Limerick in the last going into the last ten minutes. The only yeah. thing that lost it for us was the conditioning. The lads ran out of steam. But there's a common trend there, in the, and that's teams yeah. staying toe to toe with them for sixty ish minutes. And then either bringing on subs or putting the the foot down and taking the chances while other teams falter. I think that comes out of condition, yes, but also like your panel. And Limerick yeah. at the moment, I think, just have that panel and that subs to bring on that you know, like that, that that core of nineteen players, if you like. And they're all of a similar age profile yeah. as well, which helps. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're getting there now. Like the panel is a lot younger than it was even this time last year. Um. And you'd hope over the next few years we can get to that level of conditioning to really challenge. But look, anything can happen. But I don't think we'll beat Limerick this year now. It's not in a meaningful game anyway. Um, yeah, that's the thing I'd have about Clare as well. I know they're pushing them, but not. Yeah. But not and really and I suppose that, 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 that's maybe like a, a conversation, obviously, for another day, Kevin. But like I said last year, it was important that, st- that for Tip, they, they stayed relevant in the hurling world. We didn't. Like I was, I was looking at something over Christmas. Some journalist should know better, but you know he did a, a, a kind of a power ranking of hurling teams. Like, and we were nine out of nine, ninth out of nine. I mean, like it's it's embarrassing to look at that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I think like Westmead were the next team underneath us or something. Like, I mean, Jesus Christ, lads, where 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 are we? Like, you know. So Can I ask you we, something, lads. Even with last year's panel, if we were in Leinster, do you think we would we would we would have finished top three? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say so. so like, yeah. there's always that caveat with those power rankings, like, yeah, not, yeah. You know, there is a, it is there is an imbalance there in terms of the provincial championships, like, mm. massive, absolutely. So that's maybe just before we leave the intercounty seat for now. Colin, our, our former alma mater, the high school, had a good win in the under nineteen B hurling today into the semi finals. Yeah. Steve and your lads, fantastic results, down, yeah. bowed out. Uh, Enda, you were at the Hearty Cup. The Turtles had a last gasp win over in that one. You you managed to kind of trek out to that? No, I was at the Temple Moor one. <laughs> um, right. But no, I was following the updates on it and uh, they were kind of trailing the whole match. Um, literally going into <laughs> at a time they got the goal and, and tagged the point on. So a savage and win, savage win. So two absolutely. schools in the semi Did they win they as well? No, they lost by five, but geez, there were, there were three or four points up in the 45th minute, and Arts got a goal and steamrolled them in the last 10 minutes. They just got the tails up and really pulled away from them. But I wasn't Limerick expecting style. much from Temple Moore on that. But, uh, you know, they could have won it, they could have won it, but it would have been unreal to have three teams in the semi final, wouldn't it? But, uh, you know, we've two teams in it there now, which is which is good tracking, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, that it's, it's great to see, as, as you said, Tardis might have been. Uh, losing that one the whole way, but you know, the scenes at the final whistle is you know, it's a great competition within the Hardy Cup. Look, more tip schools that are playing in it, the better. Love to see the high school kind of playing in it meaning, meaningfully. Mm. I think there's potential there. That's maybe a debate for another day. But, um, and as catching your before you wrap up, lads, any any other big issues in the GA, GA world catching your eyes? Lee Keegan and the big ball hanging up wasn't, his boot there would be sad to see, but wasn't it nice to see the minor final being replayed on TG4 the other night as well? I think it was one of the highlights of, of last year and certainly the, the Christmas, Christmas TV schedule there. Um, it, it was nice to see it at the end there to, to see that game. And I mean, 
looking at looking at it, lads, like on fifty seven minutes we were seven points down. Like I was sitting there going, <laughs> Did we actually win this game? You're, you're the man down as well. Did we win this? Like, you know. Yeah. Um, it was it was pure lack of experience on Offley's part on the sideline and on the pitch. Like people People from uh, other counties that have from one whole pile, if you say the word like yeah, tradition, tradition, it, it, like as far as I'm concerned, it's a thing. And none of us, like awfully, in fairness, they had a good run in the 80s, 90s, won, won loads of stuff. But before that, like not really a relevant hurling power. And you could kind of see the inexperience in them when they were getting over the, as, as you were saying, Colin, like they were, oh, how they lost that game, I don't know. Like they were the better team for the whole match. They were well up going into at a time. But like they just didn't have the experience, the belief to see it out. Um, it was very enjoyable. You could see them all lining up at the fence to have to have the fence. <laughs> they were so way. certain they had it won. Yeah, uh, all the young lads really really like, packed <laughs> out the, the shed like end the, or whatever, just ready to run onto the pitch and then the, the pitch behind the goals where Paddy McCormick scored. Uh, all the tip yeah. lads with the arms up and all the off lads with the hands in the head. Yeah, it's great. It's a great photo. <laughs> Maybe to mention as well, Kevin, our footballers got got off to a win and start down in in Plan A on Sunday. Um, they beat Waterford, uh, which is you know it's always a t- tough place to go down d- down to Waterford and win a match. I know Waterford probably missing a few lads, but you know it's it's it's. You've been very kind to Waterford football, there, Colin. I, I am being very kind to award for football, Kevin. And maybe I'm being kind to Tiberi football as well. But you know, I think it's 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 worth mentioning. Like it's a good start for David Power and and, and the boys. Like, you know, I know I was reading Michael Quinn Living isn't involved in the panel. You know, they've lost quite a few players through injuries and retirements and lads gone travelling. And you know, it 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 it, it can't be easy. We we're talking about this with some lads I'm friendly with there over the weekend, you know, about like you know, the wa- the high water mark, I suppose, is the 2020 Monster Final, and that was brilliant. And I suppose for some lads, they're looking now, going like, really, are we ever going to win anything any more than that? You know, and it, it might be a little bit difficult sometimes for guys to get motivated. Like, so I think fair play to the to, to, yeah, to the guys absolutely. who go back year after year and you know put it in. I suppose with that one, I was kind of like looking out for the team and the panel because I didn't know how much of a change there would be. So there is a good few familiar face is still on it so I think they will be, be strong and able to compete um, this year in the league in Division 3 also a big shout out to our sponsors Orga Retro Sportswear pa- apologies if I butchered that pronunciation great get onto their website some great retro GA kind of where, where they're so uh, a bit of sponsorship there allows us to keep the show on the road here to listen to our rambling so a big thank you to them Folks, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see you again either side, of, either side of the league and the, the glass will still remain half full. But for now, thanks a million. Peace, lads.